when you cut them in half lengthwise, they kind of curl, which gives them like a natural body and movement. It's like a really good haircut, except it's a carrot. Yeah. I'm Allison Roman, and I'm gonna be making an olive oil roasted chicken. And this is basically like a chicken confit, meaning we're cooking a chicken in a lot of fat. Because it's designated for a weeknight, we want it a little bit faster. We're gonna do it at a slightly higher temperature than you would a classic confit, and we're gonna use olive oil instead of chicken fat because that's what we have, and that's what we like to use. The collective we. One of the things that I love about this style of roasting chicken is that it's a really foolproof way to get really excellent meat. It's gonna be super tender, never dry. I like to use dark meat, so bone in, skin on, dark meat. You can use breasts for this, but I find that regardless of how low and slow you cook it and how much fat, it always ends up a little bit drier than I want it. This is the vessel in which I'm going to make this chicken. What matters is that all of the ingredients that we're using fit inside the vessel. Anything that you add to the pan with your chicken and the oil, that's gonna flavor the oil and the chicken as it cooks. So if we add garlic, it's gonna infuse the oil with garlic. If we add sliced lemon, it's gonna infuse the oil with lemon. I also always like to add a vegetable, and this could be fennel, carrots, potatoes, anything that takes really well to like a long, low, and slow cook without turning to mush or burning. Carrots to me are lovely, and now because of this outfit, make me look like I'm a farmer. The tops we're gonna use for garnish because to me they taste really good. It's almost like using parsley. I like to leave a little bit of the green on. It makes everything look really natural. You don't need to save them all unless you're feeling ambitious and you wanna make like a carrot top salsa verde or carrot top pesto, which they're a little spicier and they've got a bit more like greenery to the like to their flavor. They just taste greener. Don't worry, I'm a food writer. I do this for a living. Vegetal. Vegetal. Yeah, thank you, Emily. And more carroty. They taste like from once they came. And if they're small, I'm gonna leave them whole. And when they look like this, I'm just gonna have them lengthwise. And while they have not been peeled, they have been really well scrubbed. Two ingredients that I love cooking with, especially with chicken, not revolutionary, but lemon and garlic. For the lemon, I'm gonna slice it thinly. And that's because I like the way that the slice is caramelized with the chicken. As soon as you cut into a seed, that is oftentimes what releases a lot of the bitterness. People say like, oh, I used a whole lemon in a recipe, it was really bitter. Chances are there was a little bit of seed in there and that's actually what's causing the bitterness. We got a seed, people. Perfect. When I'm cooking with whole heads of garlic, which I do often, I throw the whole thing in there and I don't peel it. And people always say, like, well, what do you do with the paper? And I just don't eat it. I pick it out. It's not gonna hurt. I think it looks nice and it's just one less thing for me to do. So I'm gonna literally slice through the entire bulb like this. The reason I like doing this is because you expose all of the cloves and they all get tender, meaning they all become edible. They get slow roasted and confit in the pan. And these parts, if there's anything like offensive to you where you're like, I couldn't possibly put that in with my chicken, then get rid of it, it's fine. So I have lemon, I have garlic, I have herbs, I have carrots. It's a humble dish. There are few things that are as good as like chicken confit and the meat and the way that the garlic caramelizes and the lemon slices. That's plenty of excitement for me, let's be honest. And as with any protein that I'm cooking, especially meat, I'm gonna season it before it gets cooked. I know it sounds crazy, but you are looking for like a teaspoon of salt per pound of meat. Kind of like when you're seasoning pasta water, you wanna add a little bit more salt than you think you need. Now I'm gonna put it in the vessel and I'm gonna do it skin side up. And that's so as it cooks, the skin can brown. And then our carrots just get scattered around. I like to do them on top because for me, the most important thing is that the chicken is submerged, not the carrots. And so remember, you can always fish this garlic out. If this kind of panics you, just peel it, that's fine. I'm not gonna do that. I like eating the, the little cloves out of the skin. And then as for herbs, I love oregano. I think it's super underrated. Any sort of hearty, spriggy herb. I would not use something like parsley or cilantro. It's too delicate. Any sort of like spring produce allium that can sit in oil and simmer for a while, this is a really good opportunity for that. I'm gonna tuck the oregano actually underneath the chicken because I want the oil to infuse with as much of the oregano as possible. I like to add the lemon last. These are kind of the bits that I'm gonna want to brown and caramelize. It's kind of like a floral arrangement in here. We're gonna put them to bed and we want them to look cute and cozy. As for the olive oil, I like to use mid-range olive oil. I don't want anything that's super cheap because those olive oils tend to be really bitter. 
because we're using so much of it, I think that it's important you use a nice-ish one. You don't want something that's super delicate and nuanced that maybe you would only use for salads because it's gonna get lost in here. The good news, before you panic, why am I using all this olive oil, is that we can save this olive oil to cook with later. So think of it as like doing yourself a huge favor in the future because we're essentially making really delicious chickeny olive oil for another time. As it stands now, I think we're in really good shape. I'm gonna salt and pepper. The olive oil is really only gonna come up about halfway up the chicken, but as it cooks, because that chicken fat is gonna liquefy, when you take it out of the oven, it'll look a lot more submerged. Now I'm going to put it in the oven. If I had a lot of time and was just like taking all day and doing a traditional confit, I might do something around 300, but because I'm trying to make this a bit more weeknight friendly, we're gonna go 325, which you're not sacrificing any integrity of this dish by doing it at a slightly higher temperature. It'll just be ready a little bit quicker. He's gonna take a little nap for about 55 to 65 minutes, and to me, that's an hour really well spent to do literally anything else other than cook, because once we take it out of the oven, your dinner is done, so. Are you gonna do like your hour off? I'm gonna go have a Chablis on ice. I don't know. Someone crack me open an oaky shard. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> don't get too excited because the chicken is not done yet, but I do wanna show you what it looks like about halfway through to give you a sense of what you're looking for when it's done. If you want, you can give it a little baste. Not necessary. The chicken will brown on its own, but while we're here, at this point, the chicken is, she's cooked. It's happened for her, but we're gonna keep going until it's super fall off the bone and the skin gets a little darker on top. Do you use oven mitt? I can't imagine like putting a mitt on and then like you lose, you lose touch with the food. I like using dish towels because you can feel what you're grabbing onto. Maybe that's just me, but I prefer a dish towel. So it has been about an hour, an hour and change. Obviously extremely hot. Um, you can tell by the <laughs> cauldron-esque bubbles going on inside. It's not as brown as it would be as if you roasted a whole chicken or you seared it in a skillet, but I'm okay with that. For these purposes, I think this is kind of the sweet spot. You're sacrificing a little bit of color for the sake of tenderness, and I think that's fine. Our lemons are caramelized. Our carrots are roasted and cooked through. Our chicken is super tender and it smells amazing. I feel like this is something that looks much fancier than it actually is. I'm also gonna spoon some of the garlic and the carrots around. I've also used this oil afterwards to like dress a salad or something like that, which is really nice. Tear those carrot tops over or parsley or whatever herb is striking you at the moment. I'm gonna add more lemon just because I think it's really nice. These little miracles are exactly what you came here for, that like pop out of their skin. So good. The nice thing about this preparation is that it kind of falls off the bone. You can kind of just eat around it, the bone pops right out. It's really nice. a really good chicken. At the end of this chicken journey, you're gonna be left with this pool of really nice olive oil, chicken fat, oregano-y, lemony, garlicky business. Strain this when everything is eaten and then keep it in your refrigerator. And it is so good to use to roast vegetables, to do this again with more chicken. Mm, that's a good move. When you take the chicken and you just eat it and then dunk it in the oil that it cooked in, is a really fantastic move. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Great, who wants some chicken?